Okay. Um, this is called the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean, please say it. Pythagorean theorem. 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 Let's say it all together. The Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean. Look around the room at the scavenger hunt you all did. Can you find out who this was named after? Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Yeah. He discovered this, uh, this truth about right triangles. And we're going to be looking today at some proofs that show why the theorem that he came up with works. Let's start here with this vocabulary. I want you to have a pen or pencil ready, and you're also going to need access to a couple of different colors or highlighters. Yes, you can share them with your neighbors. We're going to do a little color coding, but if you've got different colors at your table, it'll work. You can just share real quick. The sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle. It's frozen. Oops. I'm sorry. I was pointing to things. I didn't know you couldn't see. Again, the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Who has heard of this theorem before? Who's pretty comfortable in using it already? Okay. I would like you to um, underline legs with one color or highlighter. And we are going to highlight the legs of these two upper triangles. These are the legs of this right triangle. What do you notice about where the legs are connected? It's where the right angle is. So let's go down here and look. The legs of this right triangle are 24 and 7. Those are their lengths. And this one, those are the legs. Take a different color and underline hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. And I always think of it as like it's it's opposite of where the right angle is. If you look at the right angle on this upper triangle, if you're going straight across from it, you're going to hit the hypotenuse. Do you see that? Yeah. And that's true of every right angle. They point at the hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm going to use the same two colors because I only have two highlighters for the two legs of our, our um, actual formula. A squared. plus b squared equals c squared. And I want us to come over to our example that's got these squares coming off of it. Why are they squared? <clears throat> because the formula is that whatever the value of A is, or whatever the side length of A, if I square it, and I square the side length of B, I'm going to end up with a square for C that equals these two. And we're going to prove that right now. So let's label this one A. My highlighter's not showing that A very well. And this one is B. And that leaves this as our hypotenuse C. <clears throat> and we're going to prove that Pythagoras' theorem works. What is the side length of A? How many squares do you see along A? Three. So this is going to be 3 squared plus what number for B? 4. 4 squared is equal to what? 
5 squared. And we know that 3 squared is equal to what? Okay, that's connected to the square that we have over here. How many squares are in it? Do you guys see the connection starting to happen? And 3 squared plus 4 squared, what's 4 squared equal to? And I want you to look at our example triangle. Its square that's coming off of B has how many squares? 16. Is equal to 5 squared. What's 5 squared? 24. Okay. So 9 plus 16 is equal to 25. And C squared is equal to 25. So I'm going to use my two colors to prove in the square for this, the hypotenuse. I'm going to find my A triangle or my A side's uh, square in there. There's the 9. Do you guys see it? Does this match this? Yeah. How many squares do you think are left? <laughs> Count them. Here's my 10, <clears throat> and here's my 6 for 16. <clears throat> so we've just proven that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, as you guys know with uh, working with equations, if I have most of the information, I can go find the other information. What's true with Pythagorean theorem is if I understand that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I can find a missing side length by using the sides that we have. So let's look here. I tend to make the smallest leg be A and the longer leg be B, but because of commutative property, it doesn't really matter. So together, let's write that this is 7 squared plus 24 squared. Do we know the side length for C? So we're going to try to find the side length for the hypotenuse. So we're going to leave into the formula the part we don't know. <clears throat> you guys all know 7 squared is? 49. I want 49. you to practice with your calculator. The x squared key that's down here, try it with what you know. Always when you're trying with a, di a different tool. I know that 7 squared is 49, so I'm going to hit 7 and x squared and equals and make sure that I'm using the tool correctly. Did I get 49? So now I don't know what 24 squared is, but now that I'm confident I'm using my tool correctly, I'm going to do 24 x squared. Do you see how it puts the exponent in there for us? Equals a pretty big number. Yeah, 576. So 49 plus 576 is 625. And now this is where it gets fun. Because this is squared, we have to find the square root of this to get this. The square root of 625 is equal to the square root of c squared. And notice 24 squared was 576. Anybody want to make a guess what the square root of this is going to be? Okay. See if you can find where the square root symbol is on this calculator. Do you guys see it? It's in light blue. It is the opposite of this key, so it's the shift key. So we're going to use the, the second key and hit this, and it gives you your square root symbol. Do you see that it has a parentheses, though? So we need to enter 625, and then we have to enter the other side of the parentheses and then hit enter or equals. Does it make sense that it would be 25? Yes. So 25 is equal to C. I want you guys to try to do this one on your own.
and we'll check it against my work in just a moment. 